Welcome to part one of chapter seven, section two. We are graphing rational functions. Put your calculators away, get out some graph paper or be super neat on regular paper. We have to be very careful. We're gonna be using T-charts. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it so that you get the right answer every time. You need to turn your brain on. You need to start thinking about fractions, mixed numbers, which are okay. You know I don't use them very often. All right, and we're gonna talk about asymptotes when we get there. So let me share my graphing paper with you and let's get started. Turn to page 366. We are graphing rational functions, as I said, but first, we can't graph number one. Let's graph the parent function for all rational functions. Oh, by the way, are rational functions directly or inversely related? Or do they vary directly or do they vary inversely? Well, if the parent function is y equals one over x, what do you think? Is that direct or is that inverse? Hopefully you said inverse. All right, things that you need. You need for me always six points. However, in your T chart, I need you to have seven X's. Okay, here's what I mean before we even graph. Let's start our T chart. Okay, kids, think. What is the one number that if we plug into x right here in this function, there will not be a y value? What is the one number you can't have in the bottom of a denominator? It's zero. So in the middle, when x is zero, there's no y. Now we know our starting point. We're gonna pick three numbers bigger than zero. We're gonna pick three numbers smaller than zero. Okay, so always keep in mind the middle number, this is really your seventh. I wanted you to have six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, but your T-chart has to have seven X's Here's your seven, the middle. What can't X be? It cannot be zero because one over zero doesn't exist. Okay, let's start easy. One over one, one. One over two, one over two. I guess I don't really need that column right now. One over three. Negative one, so one over negative one. One over negative two. Remember to put the negative out front, not in the denominator. And one over negative three. All right, here's six points. Uh, you know, if you can, you can get creative with how you space out your graph. If you can't, and you know sometimes I am not very creative and I just do brute force, make everything even, because I'm just not thinking ahead. That's okay too. Be neat, be organized, you have your points. All right, so we know our X's are going by, I'm gonna actually space it out for you. I'm gonna do it like this. So uh, one, skip two boxes, two, skip two boxes, three, which means I have to go over here and skip two boxes for each integer there. Now my Y's actually only go down to negative one and only go up to one. So how about I do uh, a quarter? a half, three quarters, one. All right, it's not gonna be accurate, right? But it's good enough. We're gonna get the picture, I hope. Negative a quarter, negative a half, negative three quarters, negative one. And I have a little space down here and a little space up here. All right, let's plot our points. Negative three, negative a third. Well, this is negative a half. If that's negative a quarter, negative a third is in between negative one over four and negative one over two, just like three is in between two and four. 
So negative three, negative a third, I'll estimate right there. But negative two, negative one half is actually fairly simple because it's on the crosshairs. And so is negative one, negative one. Don't connect the dots yet. You don't know what you're doing, I don't think. One, one, two, one half, and three, a third right above a quarter. Okay, now, we know that when x is zero, there is no y. So you need to, in another color, or maybe you turn your pencil to the side and you make it nice and shady, you need to give me a dotted line, even if it's hard to see, and you need to write down x equals zero for it, because this is our vertical asymptote. We've talked about asymptotes before, remember? They are lines that the graph cannot touch, sorry, the graph cannot touch, and the graph cannot cross. So we know that when we leave one, it's gonna go look like this, right? It's gonna eventually look like it's parallel, but it's gonna get closer, 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 never touching. We know that as we go down to negative infinity, it's gonna do the same thing. Never gonna cross the y-axis, it's not gonna look like that. Now, there are also horizontal asymptotes, which we're gonna to get to in another video, how to find them at least. I'm gonna tell you right now, the x-axis is actually an asymptote. So just believe me and make a dotted line, a dashed line over the x-asymptote, call it y is equal to zero, because this is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, just believe me on it for now. Which means that as we keep going out to positive infinity, we keep getting closer to the x-axis, but never touching, never crossing. And as we keep going out to negative infinity, we do the same thing, getting close to the x-axis, never crossing, never touching. And here is our parent function with six points, three on the bottom left, quadrant three, three on the top right, quadrant one, seven things in our t-chart because we have our vertical asymptote in the middle. And that's our parent function for our inverse variation, a rational function. All right, but obviously we're gonna use different numbers. So I'm gonna have to turn the page. So you can pause here if you need to copy down more of this. Let's do number one now. Excuse me for technical difficulties there. Let's do number one on page 366, as I said before. The directions are to graph g of x, which we know is y equals negative six over x. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about how it compares to what we did on the previous page, one over x. All right, so what did I say that I wanted from you? I wanted a t-chart. I want six points, but I want seven things in the t-chart. So we're gonna start, write this down. The first thing you need to ask yourself, what can't I have right here in the denominator? I can't have zero. Because if I plug in zero, negative six divided by zero does not exist. Okay, it's the same as before, it will be changing. You always have to think, what can I not have in the denominator? Fortunately, the denominator is just x here, it's zero. All right, now I need to write three numbers that are bigger than x sorry, bigger than zero, and three numbers that are smaller than zero. And I'm gonna start plugging in one. Negative six divided by one is negative six. Negative six divided by two, you can write it over here if you need to, negative three. Negative six divided by three is negative two. Up here, negative six divided by negative one is positive six. Negative six divided by negative two is positive three. And negative three, sorry, negative six divided by negative three is positive two. Remember, negative divided by negative is a positive. All right, six points, asymptote. And again, try to be clever with your spacing for your graph if you can. If you can't, then you're human just like everybody else. So it's okay, you just try to be as neat as possible. I'm gonna do my best because this is obviously an example for everybody. 
So I am going to try to space out my x-axis just like I did before so that there's more space for us to see. So every two boxes is going to be an integer, right? And as long as you keep your x-axis the same left and right, you're okay. Now my y-axis, I don't have fractions, you know, at least not on my t-chart. So it looks like I go down to six, sorry, up to six, down to negative six. So I actually think it's okay. I can do one, two, three, four, five, six. I can make every box an integer and I think I'll be okay and the graph won't get too crazy. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Okay, I didn't do a great job down here, but I can extend it even though it's in pen. You get the idea. Okay, so let's start plotting. Negative three, positive two. Negative two, positive three. Negative one, positive six. My vertical asymptote, zero. So that means dotted line, label x equals zero. You don't have to write the words vertical asymptote, but you do need to write x equals zero. So I know that you know that this is an imaginary line called the asymptote that these won't touch across. One, negative six, two, negative three, three, negative two. And then remember, uh, well rather don't remember, I am telling you right now, and you're gonna just trust me, that this is our horizontal asymptote. So I need a dashed line, or you take your pencil, you make it shady, and then I need extra arrows, y equals zero. All right, and then you can show me as best as you can that you can curve this, and you know that they are not gonna cross the asymptotes. They are not gonna touch the asymptotes. They're not gonna flip back. I almost made that wrong. Okay, and I'm gonna rewrite the zero there. And here we have y equals negative six divided by x. We have our three points on the top left. Our three points on the top right, we have our two asymptotes. So wait, how does this compare to the graph of y equals one over x? Well, flip back. You'll notice that our former graph was up here. It was in quadrant one and quadrant three. So already I know that this is reflected. And actually, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's either reflected over the x-axis. So this quadrant came down here. This quadrant came up here. But you could also even say it's reflected over the y-axis. So, or it's reflected over the y-axis because this could look like that over there. This could look like that over there. And then finally though, our old one, our parent function y equals one over x, that had fractions in it when we plugged in one, two, and three, negative one, negative two, and three. But these have integers. Those small fractions, they became integers. So we can take an educated guess that there was a stretch a vertical stretch by six. Where did I get the six from? Right there. Okay, so this is how to graph a basic rational function. You're going to start out with zero. What can't the denominator be? Then you're going to fill in your x's three bigger, three smaller, so a total of six points to get a nice curve. You're trusting me on the horizontal asymptote. You already found your vertical asymptote. That was the first thing you did. Okay, I'll have problems for you to practice, so check online, and there will be some more videos on graphing.